So uh, we can have a change of base for the current. So starting with the base current in the base system one. So we have since we have discussed this thing that we have two base systems. One is the previous base system and a new base system. We have two base right now from which we have to know the per unit value of uh, current in a new base system. So we can have base value, base current in the base one system would be equal to. So this is base one I can say, this is base two I can say. In the base one, the current would be SB1 upon VB1 as we know, IB1 will be equal to SB1 upon VB1. In the new system, but obviously it will be IB2 will be equal to SB2 upon VB2. It is the same thing which we have discussed as B is equal to VB into IB. And uh, since uh, number one, one stands for here is the previous one or the base one. Here, two represent the new one, new base. So the base, the base current in the previous base was IB1 and that is equal to SB1 upon VB1. Here, IB2 is equal to SB2 upon VB2. So we can have the per unit also now. We can have the per unit uh, value of the current in system 1. That is system 1. The per unit value of the current in the system 1, as we know that I1, which can be represented as I1 per unit is equal to I, the actual value of the current divided by the base value I B1, I upon I B1. Similarly, in the system 2 also, I can have the per unit value of the current in system 2. So for system 2, I can have I2 per unit also, which is equal to again I upon I B2. So, this was the discussion which was telling me about the finite values in their own basis. Now, coming to the change of basis, so I need to have I2 per unit, which will be equal to IB1 upon IB2. From this, IB1 upon IB2 multiplied by I1 into per unit. Which is again equivalent to SB1 upon SB2 coming from this into VB1 sorry V B2 upon VB1 into I1 per unit into I1 per unit. So this is the formula which is very much important and which is readily used in change of base columns. This remember this formula for the current. Similarly, I can have Z1 per unit over here, which is which is equivalent to Z ohm, which we have studied, Z ohm into S B upon V B square. Z ohm into S B upon V B square. If I am writing S B1, V B1 over here. Similarly, Z2 per unit would be equal to Z ohm multiplied by my SB2 divided by VB2 square. 
This is this formula which we have studied in, uh, in the elementary classes also, and just now uh, to brush up your knowledge for permanent representation, I use this formula. I have uh, we have discussed this formula. We have discussed this formula. From this formula, I can have the z per unit value also. So I can have the z2 per unit value on the new base would be equal to v v1 upon v v2 square whole square in these squares are there multiplied by same thing I am doing here what we have done over here the i2 per unit is equal to i v1 upon i v2 into i per unit and from that i v1 i v2 values I have kept over from that so the same thing I am doing over here so it will be coming as IB1, no, sorry, VB1 upon VB2 whole square multiplied by SB2 upon SB1 multiplied by Z1 per unit. So can we remember these two formulas for understanding of change of basis of from the old uh, from the current from one per unit to another per unit. <coughs> so this is the formula for I P per unit 2, this is the formula for I per unit 1. So we shall do no problem to understand this thing much better. So there is an example uh, which have been asked in the examination that find I2 per unit when I1 per unit is given as 200 on the base of SB1 being on SB1 and SB2 as given as 300 volt amperes and 400 volt amperes. And with a base voltage of previous and new R as 100 and 100 will be 1 is equal to 100 volts and will be 2 as given as 200 volts. So we have to find the I2 per unit which is called as the current in a new base when the old base voltage and base KVA ratings are 100 volts and 300 volts. The new bases are 400 volt amperes and 200 volts. So since this is a direct formula and which we have discussed just now, so we can write, we can have the direct I2 per unit directly which is equals to which we have discussed as B1 upon as B2, as B1 upon as B2, multiplied by B2 upon B1 multiplied by I1 per unit. This is a direct formula, nothing much in that. So already we have just have to put the values and we find the answer that is SB1 is already given as 300 into VB2 as given as 200 into I per unit is already given as 200 again and SB2 is given as 400 into VB1 is given as 100. So by solving this I can have 
I2 periodic as three hundred. So please remember again that this is a per unit quantity, so it will not be having any dimensions. It's a dimensional quantity. So here also it was dimensionless. Here also it is dimensionless. So sometimes may be possible that you are knowing the answer uh, that you have already uh, computed the answer that as as a three hundred amperes, uh, three hundred. So in the question, it's like may be possible that two hundred B weight is two three hundred C is two hundred amps D is three hundred amps. Suppose. These are the answers on which the question was like this and an objective type this is given. So due to human mistake, since you know the answer is 300 now and I2 per unit, so you may take this thing which is a wrong thing. Since it's a per unit quantity, the answer would be B that is 300 without any Dimension. With the dimension, it will not be a per unit quantity. <clears throat> so please remember this thing. These are for human errors, which normally everybody does. So please take out your human errors. So with that, you will be able to gain good marks. So now coming to uh, another question. <clears throat> the same type of the question which we have discussed now. We saw the formula of the same. We can have a quick question on that, such that four Z per unit is given as hundred or hundred on four hundred volt and three hundred kV. Find new Z per unit on 500 volt and 600 kV. So in this question, nothing is given, uh, which is Z, which is uh, VB1, which is SV1, which is SP2, which is VB2. Nothing is given. Just you have to find a new Z per unit, the old Z per unit is given as 100 and so and so. The question. So we have to, uh, since everybody knows the formula for the Z per unit, so uh, we can have the, that thing which is called as Z2 per unit or the Z new per unit again would be VB1 upon VB2 square. into SB2 upon SB1 multiplied by the old per unit quantity that is set 1 per unit. So according to this, according to this, so VB1 is given as 400, so I will be writing 400 over here, VB2 is given as 500, its square is there multiplied by SB2 is given as 600 kVm, so it will be 600. SB1 is given as 300 kVm multiplied by Z1 per unit is given as 100. So it is like 128. Answer is like 128. Ohms. Correct? <clears throat> it's not correct. This ohm will not come again. Please remember this thing. That this ohm will not come. That is only 128. Again, the Z2 per unit is a dimensionless quantity. So 128 will be the answer, not the Z128 ohm. Please remember this thing. <clears throat> now 
coming to one thing, one more thing. The since we know right now know how to make the per unit representation from one base to another. So normally uh, on this the whole power system is designed in such a way that the everything on the system is on the same base will use such that the manual computation of the same is very much easier. So what is the use of this per unit impedance we will see now. 